Okay, so one disclaimer I'm going to start with, this talk is a lot more free than Malik because Nabil Hussain made a good reminder that um, allocation can be dangerously colonial. Oh. So uh, <laughs> miles and miles of Malik and freestyle. So this is a journey into sound, a journey of nostalgia that will take us from the present day back to the 90s, all the way back to the 80s. But like any long journey, I need your help. So let's see. Clap your hands, everybody. Everybody just clap your hands. Fine bo boys, clap your hands. Fine gals, clap your hands. Fine non-binaries, clap your hands. Everybody just clap your hands. All right, let's prove the world that a tech conference can keep a steady beat going for about a minute. <laughs> All right. Good. AI winter is coming. Hey, I don't even watch Game of Thrones, but enough of it flows through the spent oxygen of everyday talk that I can feel deep in my bones the hands of the dead white clones of the Cold King. Call him Skynet, having breached the high climate wall. But what's that behind him? A tsunami. What is it? What is it? Is it a divine wind come to save humanity? No, it's all the overblown promises for AI come to wash through the valley and crash the cash party. And VCs are hiding behind their term sheet shelter saying, oh, they told me this has all happened before. Oh, this has all happened before, hasn't it? And they are wetting themselves while segments of their white walker algorithms are propellering helter-skelter in the face of the massive zombies of real world anomalies because how does this stuff work anyway? And so, now, <laughs> okay, I knew it was gonna fall apart, so I gotta hold my heart, go back from the start. All right. And real world anomalies are even more terrifying than Jotunheimer's ice giants across the cosmic sea. But now I'm mixing up all my sci fi fantasy tropes, so let's go back. I'm in a daydream, y'all. I'm a keyboard mage being played a half-decent wage to be productive in front of these three screens in front of me. But I can't snap out of this White Walker fever dream because I can't make sense of what this neural network is firing. It's also an inspiring and my wet work is kind of tiring because how the flying hockey puck does this thing work anyway? I mean, right? <laughs> so, all right. Fall apart again. Sorry. <laughs> I like the rhythm, though. We need to keep going. All right. The solution of a neural network is supposed to arise like civil leaves out of a Turing complete volcano on 420. Yeah, I'm here from Colorado. Boulder represent. <laughs> Listen, you might call it machine learning, but me, my overheated brain is burning because, I mean, how I can't figure out what this digital prophet just said. I can't retool the code blue solution for code red. So. <laughs> All right. So what happens with all this deep learning and AI and everything, check, check, check it out, blah, 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 that's what he said, is that it's flipping up, Batflix, uh, it's flipping up flapjacks of Batflix statistics so incredibly high with the backpropagational blitzkrieg that our poor dummy bastards can't even tell that he's baffling us with babble bullshit. So, <laughs> all right. I'm just kidding, y'all. I mean, actually, AI, it could be the future. It could be the suture for so many of humanity's problems if we can get the neural network and then figure out in our own network how to get the bits to follow one by one the multitude of bits that have followed before. Through the Ice King and the White Walkers, this could be Skynet, but rather than worrying about a Game of Thrones fantasy, I should be wondering, however, that rather than worrying about the Game of Thrones ice king, I should be wondering who my self-driving ride is gonna hit next. But listen, these guys might be, I might feel possessed when I have the power of code flowing through the mother load of the scales of my body. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering, okay, is that the end? Okay, you guys can take a break now. <laughs> All right. Woo. Even though my brains are here, I'm gonna go back. All right, we're gonna go back to the 90s, and therefore that was the era of gangster rap, and for some reason I'm gonna put my hoodie on. So non sequitur for you. All right, this is called... 
Oh, all right. Forgot to change slides. Okay, Linux swap me. <laughs> so remember, back in the days, we didn't have a way to download software or, you know, anyway, Amazon two-day shipping, so we had to meet in person. So this is how I went. Saturday morning, tumbled out of bed, ASCII screen, blue screen, scrolling through my head. <laughs> Flexing in the mirror, cause you know I got beef. Microsoft's got the whole world in a suplex, but not me, suckers. I'm down with what's new next. Not the old, tired flavors of Unix. What am I talking about? Listen, 1991, some kid in Helsinki said, I'm working on a kernel and decided to get freaky. Said, hey, you suckers, I'm slinging open source, gonna bum rush the future and take it by force. That's why I'm eating cereal in front of my CRT. Decked out to death, so fresh and so clean. Stroll to the driveway, the six for Impala, going out for an operating system and a dollar. 30 minutes later at the old parking lot. Dudes in dirty t-shirts filling up the spot. One guy over there with a hundred black discs said, Slackware, Slackware, Linux is a hit. $13 for a 30 CD stack. Don't be going over there with those red hat new jacks. They're gonna ruin your hard disk format. Fry your motherboard, dead as a doormat. Debbie and kid piped up from the corner, said, Red Hat, why would money get with that goner? We got DB packages, we got the crown jewels. Brushing on an RPM, straight up fool. So I uh, copped some CDs and headed back out. Three wheel motion and the 60s funk track. Scheming up tomorrow's software stunts, compiling my new kernel while wearing gold fronts. No, I'm definitely not doing that. <laughs> And some of you guys have some memories too, right? I mean, Minix, what is it in it? The, these flavors of Unix that make it so useful to use with all the different tools. And writing mail, that's crazy. That's like going to hell and then telling the devil I'm gonna rewrite everything for you, mate. <laughs> and the Bay GT Xbox, with, and that, the music, I'm, gonna have to, I'm gonna have to move, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Bay GT Xbox with the first Linux distribution. Good memories. So. All right, so we've been back to the 90s. Let's go all the way back and to a different continent. Actually, my man Victor Divi is already taking, um, taking us there. We're going back to Nigeria. This music called Wedu. <laughs> so, Wedu basically, because I'm so fond of this language. You know, it was my first one, well, my first love, my first bay of languages. You know, it's like when I was 15, I went to the UK, came back with the tool of a new computer. And uh, ZX Spectrum Plus, Z80 computer for the, for the curious. So I brought back in my computer magazines, that was a must. You could type in programming listings to get on the programming bus. So. Language, okay. The language is called basic. Anybody remember basic, beginners, all purpose, something other, that's the easy part's the point. <laughs> you could, <laughs> it was easy enough to fake it. You could write anything you wanted and demonstrate it. If you were patient enough, you could see the eyes, you could see clearest if your eyes had LASIK. And it was called basic because that's what everybody made it with. And um, so you, you put up the line number, <laughs> ah, there we go. Put a number to each line and that's how you would make it. Go in the order of the adjacent statements. Or you could use a go-to statement and jump, but that was dangerous. So you could use Joseph for a function that was more, with more safety. So, oh, excuse me. Basic. And the, it was so amazing, you could have any idea you wanted and you could chase it from the brain to the keyboard and through the hot computer chips that they called ASICs. And uh, like you could chase any bugs like Grace, Admiral Grace Hopper with her grasshopper, or was it a moth or whatever insect tried to stop her. And you through the, with, by nesting in the computer tubes of her computer tubes. And then she, <laughs> sorry, I came out wrong. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, I mean, but basically, you could sometimes have the performance blues, and so you had to go to assembler. And talk about getting confused, I mean, that was a baptism into fire. <laughs> so, I mean, that was a baptism into fire. You just, uh, you'd rather come back to basic, which is why it was my favorite. And that's, uh, that's why I wanted to talk about basic, but I also want to talk about anybody else's first language. First languages, anyone? Besides basic? Just call it out, sorry? 
Python, Python, the first language was Python. You are so lucky you learned to program with the lights on. I mean, it's like everything came top to bottom with light, with white space that so you could see what you were writing. I mean, that's my favorite language now, but you know, back then we didn't have the crowd like Guido and all his people to put it together and get the people uh, coding so that everyone could enjoy. And now, now, uh, now Python, of course, has become the big thing that everybody uses and wears the gold ring of the powerful programmers creating their own projects, putting them on, uh, on GitHubs. And what, can, what am I going to move on to next? Anybody else? A different language? Fortran, oh my word! Fortran 4 was it 77. Way back then when, you know, back in heaven, it's like he was back in heaven and man was still in Eden and wearing a, a leaf in their front. And people were trying to program and pulling crazy stunts. But Fortran, I mean, didn't you do it with punch cards? I mean, trying to figure that stuff out was just way too hard. My brain couldn't stand it, it was all just melting. And now, uh, <laughs> on to the next one. Next one, one more? Sorry, what was that? JavaScript. Well, JavaScript started on the web, didn't it? I think that's what I have in my head. No, I know that's the correct. And it was, uh, I think, maybe my son. First in Netscape, that was the number one. And now it's gone everywhere, even on the command line. That's what people use to write codes when they want to be fine. And now JavaScript, I mean, NPM, that's how you install all your languages, like a gem of Ruby. Oh, talk about Ruby. Now, Ruby was another kind of language, kind of groovy. They used every symbol in the ASCII alphabet, didn't they? <laughs> Just to make sure you didn't have it. You didn't ever want for something to say. Anything else? <laughs> Sorry, PHP. PHP, I've never actually programmed in it, but it's the one with the funny question marks and angle brackets in it, isn't it? Yeah, and then you can put like your HTML, and then before you know it, you have your web page. Nice as, nice as hell. Oh, sorry, hang on. I'm supposed to be forwarding this. Oh, yes. Oh, did anyone use logo? I mean, come on. Hey, there we go. I mean, drawing with a little turtle. I mean, it was like murder. What you could get away with as a little kid and tell the teacher, look, I drew a polyhedron. <laughs> All right, before my brain. Oh, sorry, one more, one more. Pascal, oh Pascal, the ultimate learning program. That's what we wanted, that's what the teacher wanted you to go with. But sometimes it felt like you were programming in handcuffs, didn't it? Although it was kind of nice and safe, so that's how you would win it. Any coding competition that you wanted with Pascal, you would probably have a, uh, um, you probably have a leg up. And now I'm, now I'm, now I'm gonna complete now, before my brain explodes. <laughs> <That's a look. laughs>